Hi, everyone. Welcome. Good morning to our yoga for everybody class. My name is Skyla Ramirez with Plano Parks and Recreation. Let's get started today. You can start either seated or lying down. We're opening our session today with mindful belly breathing. So go ahead and get comfortable. I do usually have a few extra blankets and pillows that um, I use in the practice for comfort and you are more than welcome to bring in um, blankets, pillows, fancy yoga props like blocks and bolsters. You can bring in anything you want to the practice to create more comfort for your body. So as we get comfortable, if you choose to lie on your back, you could always bend your knees. This is one of the quickest ways to take pain and stress out of the back and the spine. Also, if you're lying on your back, you can use a pillow under your head. That also seems to create just a lot more comfort on the neck. Let's come into our supine lying on the back or seated position and place both hands over your stomach. You can stack the hands or bring them a little bit out to the side. No matter where you are, relax your head and neck, maybe feeling as if your chin is coming in just a little bit towards the chest. And even if we're lying on the floor, we feel like maybe we just sort of bring that chin in just a little bit. So you're feeling the back of the head just sort of sliding on the floor. And then we'll all come to a still point and notice the breath. Now, first, does it feel easier to breathe in through your nose or your mouth? We're not judging either as right or wrong here. We're just gonna tune into the path of least resistance. Inhale into the nose or the mouth and down into your stomach. And now exhale from the throat. <sighs> Exhaling as if you're trying to sigh or fog a mirror, almost as if you're saying the sound. <sighs> um, inhaling, the stomach opens and inflates, it rounds out. And then exhale. Let's try maybe two or three more like that. Inhaling, the belly gets round. Now, no matter where we are with this breath, Let's encourage the inhale to move in through the nose and out from the throat, keeping the lips touching. Inhaling through the nose, lips stay touching, exhale from the throat. Now, naturally when we do this, we'll, we will probably still feel that some of the exhale goes up and out from the nasal passages. To add on to this, Exhaling as if you're trying to fog a mirror. So just like that <sighs> effect, but keep the lips together. This is going to open up the back of your throat and it will open up the pockets of the cheeks. This is known as ujjayi breath. Inhaling into the nose as if you're fogging a mirror, lips together. And you'll start to get a sound with the breath. That's how you know that you're doing this one right. Inhaling into the nose. Exhaling with that ha sensation. Now, I don't know if you can hear my breath when I do it, but it does have a sound that reminds me of um, like a scuba diver type sound. There's like feedback from the exhale, from the air moving up and out with that little bit of tension in the throat and that roundness in your cheeks. I've also had um, kids call it the Darth Vader breath, which I think is really cute. Let's keep this breath, inhaling into the nose. Exhale from the throat, lips touching, listening for that breath and using the stomach to regulate the in and out flow. Inhaling, belly goes out, lips together. Exhaling, pull the belly button in. Two more mindful breaths. 
Inhaling into the nose, belly out. Scuba diver breath, belly in. Maybe just one more. Now let the body relax, let your jaw relax. No matter where you are, let's take that head and turn it left and right. So turn the chin and the head towards your left shoulder only as far as the neck permits and then bring it to center, turn it over to the right. Slow, easy does it only as far as the body permits. Bringing it through neutral, we're just gonna let the chin come in and up a little bit as if you're saying yes. And then come to neutral and one more time, take it left and right, just very tiny, unlocking any energy in the throat, anything at all that might be holding tension in your neck. We wanna let that go. From here, those of you who are seated, let's please take our time and make our way down into lying on our backs. Now, one of the ways that you can make your way to the floor is to first bend your knees, then let those knees go to one side. From here, you can lie down on your side with those knees bent, then roll onto the back. And this is a nice way to make our way down to the floor, um, respecting our blood pressure and avoiding dizziness and vertigo, moving nice and slow. Once we make our way down to the floor, let's all draw the knees into the chest and we'll hold on either behind your thighs or behind your knees. No matter where you hold, the, the grip is pretty light. We're not trying to be really forceful or invasive with the stretch. Just really keeping those hip bones in the frame of the body. So we're pressing the knees in just a little bit and then drawing the thighs in towards the chest. While you're here, point your toes. So we're gonna do a ballerina toe and then straighten the legs all the way up as far as your knees give you permission to go. Once we have the legs straight, we can flex and point the feet. So we'll make a flat foot and then a pointed toe. So um, to express the anatomy of it, the flat foot is like when you're wearing a flip-flop and the pointed toe is like when you're wearing a heel or a pump. Flat foot, pointed toe. Just a couple more. We wanna get some blood circulating and um, some mobility introduced to the body before we stand too much on our feet. Let's roll those ankles out, a little bit more mobility, maybe a little bit more energy, a little more blood pumping and moving through the legs and the feet. If you hear some little snap, crackle, pops, that's really normal, as long as there's no pain with it. Let's come to any still point, seeing that the knees are at the width of the hips. Let's bend the knees and lower our feet flat to the floor while we're lying on our backs. From here, we're taking our palms down beside us, palms down outside of the hips. Let those knees sway maybe just halfway over to the left, not too far. And as you sway those knees to the left, we keep the right foot on the floor. We can press down into the right foot and that will lift the right hip just a little more. Breathe through this, taking a nice big inhale and exhale, maybe one or two more. Just a little bit of weight, just a tiny bit of pressure in that foot. Let's bring it through center. Letting the knees sway maybe just halfway over to the right. So as we sway to the right, you may notice your right foot will, will peel away from the floor. Keep the left foot flat on the floor, then start to push into your left foot to get a little bit of a lift of that left hip. Holding it here, we may want to look straight up at the ceiling, keeping the neck neutral. Bring awareness to the breath, big inhale. And now exhale. <sighs> Big sighs of relief with that breath. 
And the more breath we release, the more we relax the jaw, chances are the more we'll be able to soften our back and our hips. One more. Let's bring our knees to neutral. From here, take the feet out maybe as wide as your yoga mat, wider than the hips for sure. Let's take our hands out like a T. Palms can be down or up. You could even bend the elbows if that feels better on your shoulders. Let's move into windshield wipers, letting the knees sway left and right. It's this large windshield wiper movement. Think of like windshield wipers on a bus. So nice big sways with the knees. And on these twists, we may feel inspired to, to go a little deeper. So both your feet might peel away from the floor a little bit. As you twist to the left, you may feel your left knee touch the floor. You can push into your right foot to open that right hip a little bit. Your right foot will not be flat on the floor, but you can still press on the outer edge of that foot. Let's come through center. When both knees go to the right, we might be able to rest that right leg down on the floor, pushing into the edge of the left foot, inner edge of that left foot, and lifting the left hip, finding a nice big breath, Big exhale, let's bring it through center. One more time to each side, knees over to the left. Maybe push into the right foot, big inhale. And now release. Let's find neutral with the breath. When you're ready, let the knees sway to the right. Push into the left foot, lift that hip, big inhale. And then relax. Let's walk our feet in so that our toes are almost touching. From here, bring the left knee in, holding on behind the thigh. Let's point our left toe and hug that left knee in towards your chest. And if it feels better, you could even try towards your armpits. You can take that left knee a little bit out to the side into the left armpit. Sometimes this stretch just gets into some different parts of your inner hip and your groin area. From here, let's bring the knee to neutral and set the foot down, drawing in our other leg. The right foot comes straight in, and then maybe we take it out to the side, just giving the body an opportunity to experiment with different types of alignment. And then maybe closing your eyes and just feeling curious what kind of sensations might come out of each little change that we make. These little tiny changes with the body can reveal very different feelings for us. When you're ready, slowly bring that knee to neutral. Let's let the foot come down. Feet are at hips width, knees at hips width reaching the arms up and back overhead. Elbows might bend, palms stay up towards the ceiling. From here, lower the palms down beside the hip. Inhaling, let's press into our feet. Lift the hips away from the floor. Holding in bridge pose. Maybe engaging the buttocks muscles just a little bit, not too much. If you're having any pain in your low back or feet or in your knees, release your hips down a little bit so that those hips just hover over the floor. It doesn't have to be a big movement. The bigger movement is not the better movement in yoga. It's the micro movements. That's where all the magic happens with the tiny movements. Let's lower the hips, inhaling, arms go up overhead. Exhale, arms come down, palms press into the floor. Inhale, hips come up. Exhale, hips go down. Let's keep that rhythm, alternating upper and lower body. Inhaling, arms up. Remember that Ujjayi Darth Vader breath, exhale. 
Inhale, hips up. Exhale, ujjayi. We have several more of these to cycle through. So you can always just close your eyes. You can look straight up at the ceiling. Inhale, focusing on matching the breath to the movement. Let's lift and lower the hips one more time. From here, let's let those knees sway just a tiny bit. Notice in your own body which direction feels more comfortable. Let's roll into that direction and bring the body into a side line position with the knees bent in. So we're almost like curled up in a little ball or a sleeping baby position on our side. Use this time to find the breath along the sides of your spine, breathing down into the low back, middle back, Breathing under the shoulder blades. Exhale, relax the upper back, the middle back, the low back. At least maybe two or three more breaths like this. Inhaling low back, middle back, upper back breath. Exhale, upper back, middle back low back. Maybe just one more like that, breathing deeply down into the low back. So usually we'd be breathing into our belly here, but the belly is contracted. So we're teaching the breath to move into the back of the lungs. And as the back of the lungs expand, we're able to open the ribs, massage the kidneys, stimulate the adrenal glands. This is to fight adrenal fatigue and chronic fatigue. When you're ready, slowly use the top arm down on the floor, pushing into that top arm. We're gonna come up to seated. So the next couple of poses, cat and cow, are traditionally done in all fours with pressure on your knees and hands. If you know that this is creating pain for your body, you can do the same movements from a seated position, you can sit and bend your knees, put the hands by your thighs, and you'll be coming forward and back with your spine. So I'd just like to show you, for those of you who want to do the seated expression, you start seated tall, maybe put a pillow under your hips. Inhale, you're gonna come forward, pull the ribs up and lift the chin. Then exhale, pull the belly button back, drop your head and round the spine. Let's look at it one more time, just in case some of, um, some of our bodies are just getting familiar with the mechanics of it. So your legs need to be wide enough, usually for your ribs and chest to pass through. Coming forward, we inhale, lift the ribs, lift the head, and then exhale, we pull back. You can tuck the tailbone under a little, but I don't recommend a lot of um, movement on the tailbone that can hurt the bones. So that's cow when you go forward, cat when you go back. From all fours, it looks a little different. We have our knees under the hips. We're stacking the shoulders, elbows, and wrist in a straight line. And you could come down to your elbows as well for this movement. This is a great way to take all tension off your wrist. From wherever you are, we drop the belly and flip the hips back. Inhaling, lifting the chin, steady the gaze in front of you or close your eyes, seeing with the mind's eye. Inhale while we're in cow. Exhale, pull the belly button up and round the spine. Let's drop the head. Matching the movement to the breath whenever it feels right for you. Inhaling, stretching the front of the lungs, going into cow. Exhaling, contracting the belly, rounding our spine for cat. 
waiting for that inhale to initiate the movement. Find ujjayi. Exhale as if you're going to say, but keep the lips together. Just a few more of these. Let's find all fours or come to any neutral position. From here, we're going to go ahead and step one foot forward. If you're seated on the floor, find all fours forward, into a low or kneeling lunge using one or both hands on that front supporting leg to support the body. We can tuck the back toe lift the knee as we shift forward and make our way up into standing. So we're just taking our sweet time to get off the floor. From standing, let's all bring our knees up onto our thighs and we're creating a flat back. To create this flat back or this more neutral spine, you push your hips back and you want to feel almost a spread through the buttocks area. So we're taking away any tension, or clenching of the buttocks and the pelvic floor to encourage more movement in the hips, more of a neutral spine. From here, let's let the hips sway just a little bit left and right. And as we do, we're feeling how the weight shifts in our feet. There's a little bit of an adaptation so that the body can keep its center of gravity. Notice that when you sway also, one leg will straighten, one knee will bend. There are just some very natural patterns that the body has to keep us safe. So just kind of lean into those natural patterns as the body shifts. When I sway my hips to the right, I bend my right knee and straighten my left leg. You're welcome to try the same. Swaying to the left, bending the left knee, straightening the right leg. And maybe we just keep that pattern of alternating the knee bend into that sway of the hips. Let's try maybe just a couple more on each side. You might start to feel this in your back and your hips. It is a strengthener. Let's come to center, slowly come up. Easy does it on that low back and shake off those legs. Take a moment and just tell your feet, your knees and your legs how grateful you are to have them today, how grateful you are to be able to stand tall because of these amazing feet and ankles and knees and legs. Breathe in gratitude for your physical body and breathe in gratitude for your physical capabilities. Wherever you are, we're standing with the feet at hips width on our mat, opening up the palms of the hands down beside us. On an inhale, we sweep the arms straight up and overhead, reaching the fingertips towards the ceiling. Now turn the palms forward and bend the elbows. On an exhale, pull your elbows back. It's like a big backstroke type movement and sweep back behind you, opening the chest. We call these our flying arms. Inhaling, sweeping up, big breath in. Palms forward, exhale back. Maybe exhale from your throat, open the mouth, let go of any tension in the jaw. Inhale, exhale, <sighs> sigh of relief, open up. Let that breath have a voice. Exhale back, <sighs> at least two more. You can close your eyes and this can help the body to start recruiting muscles for better balance. Just closing the eyes. One more. And then exhale back. From here, let's inhale both arms up and overhead, lacing our fingers together. We're inverting the palms and pressing up. Take a moment, check in with what you are feeling in your neck or your shoulders. If there's any pain, bend the elbows and lower the hands down in front of you. So you can press the palms out from your chest 
or out from your belly instead. Let's step our left foot back, left foot stepping back, keeping a bend in the right knee. So I am a um, mirror teaching. That means that I actually put my right leg back, but I'm calling it my left leg. So in case you know any of our bodies get confused with left and right, just do what I'm doing. So just copy my body position. We have left foot back, right leg forward, bending the right knee. From here, we're pressing up through the hands, or maybe you're pressing forward or down. Lean a little bit over to the right, getting a big stretch through the left side of your body. You can turn the head up. This is usually the most strenuous on the neck. It's not wrong, but it is the most strenuous. We can keep the head at neutral, or we can look down like just under the right armpit or over your right shoulder. This is usually uh, more compatible with gravity. Imagine you're breathing into the upper left lung. And as you inhale, pull up from your left elbow. Finding whatever breath is gonna work for you. It could be that, that sigh of relief with the mouth open, or it could be the lips together with that ah, or that scuba diver sensation. Holding for two more breaths. Option to close the eyes. When you're ready, bring it to center. Let's let these hands come down onto our hips. Shifting forward, we're flipping our hips back. Again, getting that spread through the buttocks and the hips region. Left foot is back, right knee is bent. From here, we're just gonna shift forward, lift the left heel, and then take the left foot back. And we're gonna rock forward and back a few times. Coming forward, left heel lift, and then back, press down. Inhale, little lift. Exhale, back and down. So we are working with our center of gravity and shifting forward, we're putting most of our weight into that right leg. So we're actively pushing down into the earth, keeping a bit of weight or sensations in that left foot so that we're still staying balanced. Option to hold it here, maybe keep that left heel lifted. Option to take your hands away from the body like wings or like an airplane. So you're taking your arms back behind you, Palms down, gazes forward, maybe even recall cow pose here. So there is a sensation of the hips flipping back, the belly leaning forward, the chin lifting just a little bit, big inhales around the heart. You can hold it here, continuing to work on strengthening the back while we're stretching the front of the body. Or maybe we add in just a tiny balance challenge by bending that left knee and taking our left toe away from the floor. Standing tall, standing strong on that right leg. Just two more easy breaths, no rush with the breath. Just do what your body feels is right for you. One more. Let's lower that back leg. Inhale, bring the arms straight up. Palms are angled in with the hands at shoulder width, keeping a bend in our right knee, warrior one pose. Let's hold it here. Maybe even close your eyes. Imagine an egg perfectly balanced in the middle of your head. And now try to lower your chin to the point where that egg can topple over. We want the egg to roll over. So bending the head down just a little bit, chin in just a tiny bit, just enough for that egg to topple over. We may want to open the eyes and look past our nose and cheeks. 
establishing drishti. This is an active point where we focus our vision to create more balance. Notice, notice when you feel distracted, when you want to look away from that point. And is it possible to notice you're distracted and notice that you want to look away, but you don't. We could even close the eyes, use the mind's eye to see that point. And again, continue to gaze softly. When you notice a distraction or maybe an impulse to move the eyes around, choose not to react. Do not react to that impulse to look around. Keep that gaze steady. This is a type of active meditation in the practice, drishti. When you're ready, let's bring our hands down to our hips. Looking down, let's open our eyes to see where our feet are and we're stepping forward with the feet at the width of the pelvis bones. Not quite hips width, just a little more narrow than hips width. Our toes are forward and we're spreading the toes out, soften the knees. Inhale, sweep the arms up, fly the arms and open the chest, reach tall. Exhale, take it back. Bring the hands forward with the palms up and sit your hips back. With a flat back, we're finding chair pose. Inhaling, we sweep the arms overhead, pull the elbows back, reach back and around. Exhale, elbows pulling back, big backstroke movement. Palms come up and forward and sit the hips back, chair pose. Option to close the eyes. Once we see the movement and practice it a few times, we can always close the eyes to enhance the practice. Usually when we close our eyes, we will use more muscles. Inhale. Your body is probably going to get a little wobbly when the eyes are closed. That's normal. That is the brain working overtime, neuromuscular connection. The brain is communicating to the body. Maybe just one more, one more time. Inhale, fly the arms up. Exhale, take them back. <sighs> Sitting back, chair pose. From chair, we can add in just a tiny balance challenge. We either hold it here, build strength in your thighs, or shift forward and lift the heels just enough to swipe a credit card under your feet. Keeping the back flat, pulling the stomach muscles in, allowing the buttocks muscles to spread. We want to eliminate any clenching through the sphincter region. Remember to look forward. Now we want to balance the egg on the head. So balance the egg on your head, open the throat. Just two more breaths, strengthening the legs. When your body's ready, ready, drop those heels, stand up, and just move, move in any natural way. You might want to kick it out or move the ankles around. Let's take it to the top of our sequence with warrior one. Beginning on our mat, feet a little more narrow than hips width, palms open. Inhaling, we sweep the arms up, lacing the fingers, inverting the palms. We might be pressing up in an active palm gesture, or maybe we bend our elbows, push straight ahead, or even press down a little bit. So again, we're not really focusing on the arms so much in this. This is more about the spine and the lower body today. From wherever you are, step your right foot back, just a very casual stride. In fact, we wanna kind of maybe make that stride tiny. That way there's less pressure on your back while we work on strengthening it. Let's keep a bend in that left knee. Inhale, pull up and out of that right armpit. Keep pressing down and back into that right foot. The right leg is straight. 
There is a strong connection of the right foot into the earth, press into the inner blade of that right foot, outer blade, balance that energy. Press back into the heel and spread the toes. Press into the inside of your left foot. Inhaling, breathe into the upper right lung. Notice where is the head comfortable. So we explored looking up, straight ahead, or working with gravity, look down to the left. Two more breaths here, big inhale. When you're ready, bring it through center. Let's bring the hands down onto our hips. And we're just gonna shift forward, pressing down into that left foot, bending the right knee and the right heel, and then take it back, keeping that left foot flat. Coming forward, little shift, and then take it back. Forward, web out the toes on the left foot, press down, lift that right heel and then take it back. Maybe close your eyes even now. Coming forward, lifting the heel, lift the chest, steady the gaze up. Maybe looking to where the wall meets the ceiling, wherever you're practicing today. Taking it back, option to close the eyes. Closing the eyes usually does not make it easier. I don't like to say it makes anything harder, so let's just say it makes it really different when you close your eyes. Just one more time, shifting forward. Let's hold it so that we have that little lift in our left and our right heel, and we're pushing straight down into the right foot. Check in, outer blade, inner blade of the foot. All energies are locked into the earth through that foot. We call it padabandha, the foot lock, padabandha. From here, we can bend that right knee a little more and then maybe lift that foot. You don't have to, you can keep the foot on the ground. No matter where you are with this, extending the arms behind us, airplane expression, shoulders pressing down and back. The hands are open. We might want to lean forward a little more. It's okay to lean forward as long as you keep your chest lifted and your gaze lifted. Staying for maybe three more breaths. No rush with that breath. The harder the pose, the bigger the sigh on the exhale. Big inhale. Just one more breath yet. When you're ready, set that right foot down, right leg straight, right foot flat, keeping a bend in the left knee. Let's inhale the arms straight up overhead. Palms are facing in and the arms reach straight out of the shoulder joint. If this creates any pain in your shoulders or neck, you could always bend your elbows into cactus arms or put the hands at the heart instead. Take the arms out of it. We want to saturate all of our efforts and energy into this lower body and spine work today. Let's all imagine we have that little egg wobbling on our head, looking straight ahead, and now bend the head or tilt your chin down so that that egg just wobbles right off. Closing the eyes once we establish that point or that drishti. Closing the eyes. Continuing to bend the left knee. Actively pushing back into that right leg. Imagine behind the right knee. Imagine maybe there's like a little bug crawling up your leg and you're trying to ooh, get it off, get it off, get it off. And then press back and just hold that right leg straight. Focus on the breath. Drishti. Seeing with the mind's eye, notice any impulse to look away. And chances are there will be an impulse to look away. At that point, we notice the energy, we notice the impulse, and we notice 
the space and the right to choose. We can react or we can stay focused. One more breath. When you're ready, bring the hands down. Easy does it for the body. Let's look at our feet and line the feet up at the top of your mat. Shake off the ankles, shake off the knees, maybe do a little cha-cha, move the back around a little bit. Let's find our standing position for chair pose. Feet could be at hips width or they could be a little more narrow. Web out your toes, web out the fingers, inhale, sweep the arms back and around. Exhale, backstroke, take it back, palms up, sit the hips back, lead with the chest. Option to lift the heels. Dropping the heels, inhale, reach up, big breath in. Exhale, take it back. <sighs> Pull it through, sitting back, lifting the heels. Let's try maybe three more. Drop the heels, inhale, lift. Exhale, pull back. Hands come through, hips go back, lifting the heels. Option to close the eyes through that sequence. It can feel very different. Just one more time through, no rush. Let's stand tall, shake off the whole body. Ah, so we're moving into just a little bit more balance before we come down onto the floor for some deeper stretching and meditation today. If you want to bring a chair into the practice or maybe um, if you'd like to position yourself closer to a wall, you can. I do like to use a chair to give some um, alternatives. So it could be a chair, it could be a wall, it could be a countertop. All right, so I have my chair on the left side of my body. So if you're gonna mirror me, you could always put yours over on the right, and then you'll be able to do what I'm doing physically. You don't have to worry about left and right at all. Standing with the inside leg to that prop, we're gonna keep that leg down on the floor. Let's take our outside leg, Lift the heel and turn the knee out to the side. At this point, we can rest our heel into our ankle, or we might want to slide that foot up to the inside of the lower leg. So maybe it's just on the inside between the shin and the calf, or move past your knee and bring that foot up into the thigh close to that groin region. Now, if you want to reach down and give your leg a little boost, that's perfectly fine. All we do afterwards is we stand tall and we just make sure that we haven't lost our tall spine with that little boost. Keeping our knee out to the side, standing tall, we have found strong, sturdy roots. This is our tree pose. Taking the outside arm on an inhale, we can sweep it back and around, reaching straight up towards the sky. And if it feels right for you, maybe take that other arm away from your prop, experimenting with reaching that arm up as well. Now the arm position can make a big difference for balance. Some people balance better when the arms are out like a T, kind of like imagining you have a stick, like a tightrope walker. You could have the hands closer in front of you. You could have the hands at your heart maybe even rest them down on your waist and hips. It's not to say that any of the arm positions is better than the other, but the different arm positions can reveal where we might have different muscular imbalances in the body. So this is not so much about being an arm workout, but use your arms in a way to improve the rooting of your tree. So think about where do you want to put the arms to stay more grounded energetically. We're staying for maybe two more breaths. So hopefully we're here about a minute or so. When it feels right for you, slowly let that leg go. We might want to shake off the knees, move that standing foot around. Finding our tree pose on the other side. 
inside leg stays rooted to the earth. Spread out the toes, press to the inner and outer blades of the foot. Outside leg, the knee opens. We can press the heel to the inner ankle, foot to the lower leg, or slide that foot up past the knee. Interestingly enough, the arch of the foot fits perfect on the knee, but that is the most dangerous place to put the foot. The joint is just in such a really delicate place here with pressure. We want to keep that foot off of the knee. Let's take our outside arm, inhale, reach it up, big breath in, reach up like you're holding on to 500 or 1,000 helium balloons. There's a sensation of being stretched to the sky, pulled into the sky. And at the same time, you're rooting down into the earth, really step into that supporting foot while you lift up towards the sky. We're creating as much length as possible from your left hip all the way up to your right armpit. Option to take the other arm away. It is common to notice that maybe it's easier to balance on one leg versus the other. It doesn't necessarily mean that's your good leg or your better leg. It's just something to be aware of. Letting go of any judgment or comparisons in the body, simply observing, move on, bring it to the breath. Inhale and exhale. Remember, you can tight rope walk, cactus arms at the heart, waist and hips, taking advantage of all the different ways your body can move. At least a couple more easy breaths. When you're ready, let's slowly release the legs, release the feet, shake everything off on the floor. At this time, if you think you wanna grab a quick sip of water, go ahead and do so. We are gonna make our way down to the floor. You could even go grab a pillow real quick or a blanket. Coming down to the floor, we hinge from our hips. Taking one leg back, we lower a knee and then the other foot down. We're coming around into an easy seated position. Crisscross applesauce, easy seated. From easy seated position, inhaling the arms overhead, let's take a gentle twist, twisting over to the left or the right. Let your body choose. Lower the arms. As we go into that twist, if you're twisting to the left, the right hand is on the left knee. If you're twisting the other direction, left hand to the right knee. Close your eyes. And let the breath stay a little shallow in your upper chest with this twist. Soften the breath. Twisting postures are extremely powerful and we don't have to put a lot of effort into them um, for them to work their magic in the body. So just a gentle rotation, just enough so that the body feels it's able to wring out any toxins in the belly or the intestines. When you're ready, take that twist over to the other side. And again, easy does it. It can feel very different from left to right. We have different organs on different sides of the body. So naturally you might feel a tightness on one side if your liver is there, or um, if you ate breakfast, or maybe there's even like leftover um, matter in the intestines that's working its way down. That happens a lot in yoga. So when we get to these final postures with a twist, it can feel really different from when we began class as this helps with elimination processes as well. So don't force it, whatever you do, don't force it. Just meet 
the body where it is, find the breath, soften around any parts of the body that are tense. When you're ready, slowly come around to neutral. From our neutral position, let's stretch our legs out in front of us, straightening the legs as much as it's comfortable for your body, seated staff. Inhaling, sitting tall. Exhale, just gently fold forward and let your spine round. If you think you'd rather do butterfly pose at this time, you could always bend your knees touching the feet together, open the knees, and you can hold on to your feet. So either butterfly pose or legs straight seated staff pose. Let your body choose for you. And there's plenty of time to experiment and you can change your mind at any time. Try a few big exaggerated exhales here. Let's keep the head relaxed. Slowly begin to stack the spine, lifting the head last. From here, we're lying down on the floor for some final relaxation to safely lie down. We might want to bend the knees just as we did before. Knees roll to one side. We lie on our sides. You can stay lying on your side, maybe grab a pillow or roll over onto your back. Now, in some instances, some people prefer to roll onto their stomachs and lie down on their bellies. And there's no right or wrong way for you to position your body for final relaxation, just, just get comfortable. In some cases, if you're experiencing dizziness or nausea, you may even sit up, that's okay. Let's find the breath, the foundation for our entire practice. As long as we're breathing, we're doing yoga. Everything else is, is, is existing or as a result of this breath. So tune into the breath. Close your eyes and sense the presence of a bright white light all around you. It is a shimmering white, like luminescent. It's like you're just sort of like in a cloud of vaporescent energy. And as you inhale, your whole body draws in, it absorbs this white light. You draw it in through your pores. You bring it in through the body with the breath. It comes in through the soles of the feet, the palms of the hands, top of your head. This white light even comes from the earth into your body. On every exhale, soften your whole body and, and have a sense of that light leaving and expanding and you expand with that light. Inhale, draw the light in. And as you draw it in, imagine there's a heaviness to it feeling the body kind of heavy when you inhale. And then exhale as that white light leaves. Your physical body contracts, but energetically you expand and you see that white light growing around you, even greater than the light that you're in now. When you exhale, the light is bigger. Inhaling, there's a heaviness, there's a sinking, there's a connection to the body and to the earth. Exhale, infinite expansion, the act of 
letting go so that we can open our minds to change. This is known as a parigraha, the art of letting go, the act of letting go. Inhaling, we're heavy, we're open, we receive. And then exhale, we let go and we expand infinitely. Let's try that maybe just a couple more easy breaths. Just let go of the light. Maybe just continue to have a knowing of its presence in you, around you, through you, you are one with this healing universal energy. You might wanna stay here a little longer. You most certainly do not have to get up. There is a phenomenon in yoga where as soon as the class is over, we finally relax. It happens all the time. So stay right where you are if you can and just lay there. You could even go to sleep. For those of you who know that you set aside one hour today, I want to respect your time. And at this time, I would ask that you just move a little bit and maybe come up to seated. Please take your time. Our final closing gesture is both hands at the heart, known as Anjali Mudra or prayer hands. But of course, you can keep your hands beside you if that's more comfortable. Let's draw in a big inhale, a deep unifying breath, big breath in, and now let it go. <sighs> Maybe one more like that, big breath in. <sighs> From here, we can bow together in closing. Namaste, everyone. Thank you so much for bringing all of yourself today, for stepping into your greatness, for revering your body, the physical vessel. I look forward to seeing you all next time in our class. Have a fantastic day, everyone.